If you've decided to invest out of state, your next question is probably, where do I invest? Welcome back to Coffee Corner with Lattes and Leases. My name is Soli Cayetano, and today we're gonna jump into the basics of out of state investing, starting with how to choose a market to invest in. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, and follow me on Instagram at Lattes and Leases. With literally thousands of markets to invest in, narrowing down to just one can seem really intimidating. I often come across aspiring investors who are stuck in analysis paralysis due to the many options or they lose momentum in a market because they get sidetracked for shinier looking markets. Whatever the case, today our goal is to help you narrow down your market selection using a mixture of goals, network, and data. I chose Cincinnati, Ohio as my market to invest in. I was a new investor and didn't understand all of the metrics to look at when choosing a market. I visited Cincinnati for my day job as a commercial real estate broker, and I saw signs of revitalization and growth. On that same trip, I met a local investor who showed me around the market and was willing to introduce me to some of his team members. The combination of those two things and the fact that I could purchase a home for around my budget of $100,000 made this market really appealing. As I progressed in my journey, I learned all about what market fundamentals to look for in a market, which helped me reaffirm my decision to invest in Cincinnati. First and foremost, you're going to have to start with your goal in mind. Markets are usually geared toward either cash flow or appreciation. I personally chose to focus on cash flow. This one question alone will start to really narrow down those options. Next, we're gonna dive into a few metrics that can help you further narrow down your markets. Number one, competitive advantage. This is where I like to start. Do you have any friends or family in a different market? Have any investor friends who can refer you to their team? Your team will make or break your out-of-state investments. So if you have people in place, you already have a big competitive advantage. Just because you might have family in the area doesn't really mean that you should automatically select that as your market. It's a great place to start, but first you have to ask yourself, does this market match my strategy of cash flow or appreciation? If so, there are a few more metrics to look at. Number two is price point. Look at the average price point in the area. When I was starting out, I had about $25,000 to spend on a down payment, which really limited the price points I could look at. For a conventional loan, you'll be putting around 20% of the purchase price down for a down payment, plus some money for closing costs. Number three is positive population and job growth. More jobs equal more people, which increases demand for housing. Positive growth in both of these areas is usually a good indication of market strength. Number four is diversified industries. When buying rentals, we're focused on investing in areas with high demand for housing. If you invest in a town where there's only an industry for manufacturing factories and that factory shuts down, your tenant base dies. By making sure the place you invest in is supported by at least three industries, you'll protect yourself from big vacancies if one of those industries dies down. Number five is crime and unemployment. Low crime rates and unemployment rates typically signify a better tenant base. Number six is the 1% rule. If you're looking specifically for cash flow, this is a good metric to keep in mind. If the average monthly rent is at least 1% of the purchase price, it's a good indication that that market will produce cash flow. Here's a bonus for you. Location relative to where you live. Although it's not necessary to visit your properties, I find that a lot of people will eventually see their properties once in a while. If you're stuck between a few solid markets, distance from your hometown could help be a tiebreaker. I know if I were to choose another market, I would preferably choose one that's just a little bit closer to California. There are many more good statistics to look at, but these will be a great place to start. If you're actively trying to narrow down on a market, here's your homework. Get out a spreadsheet, start making a list of all these cities you wanna analyze, Research and write down the answers for all of these items so you can compare and contrast them to each other. If you don't know where to start, Bigger Pockets has all sorts of recent lists for best cash flowing and appreciating markets that can kick off your list. Once you start looking at numbers, the decisions will become a lot less emotional. You'll be able to commit to a market knowing that these are solid fundamentals backing your decision. Have you already begun narrowing down to a few markets? Let us know in the comments below which markets you're looking at and what metrics helped fuel that decision. I mentioned that the process all starts with a decision between cash flow and appreciation. 
attention. One of my favorite quotes is cash flow brings freedom and appreciation brings wealth. If you're trying to replace your day job income, you'll need to have that consistent income coming in. My personal goal is to build a steady base of cash flow and afterwards pivot to a more appreciating market. There's room for both strategies, but you'll have to focus on one first in order to get your portfolio up and running. Next week, we'll be diving into how to build a team who can be your eyes and ears on the ground. Thanks so much for joining Coffee Corner with Lattes and Lisas, and I can't wait for you to join me next week for more out-of-state investing content. Mm -hmm.